All righty, today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about um, jazz tone and just some of the different options. So if you've never played before, hopefully this video will be kind of a good starter of what are some of the common different tones that people use, what kind of strings, picks, um, all that kind of stuff. It's gonna focus more on just the guitars and the pickups and strings. Um, not so much on the amps and the pedals because it's, it's too hard to get everything in, in one video. It'd be way, way too long. But anyway, this will be a good starter on, um, you know, do I want a hollow body? How big? Do I want a humbucker, a P90? Do I want a single coil? And all that kind of stuff. So hopefully it's a good starting point for a lot of you. And even if you've played before, and maybe you just want to experiment with your tone a little bit or get an idea of would it be cool to switch to flat wounds or round wounds or thin, thinner, thicker strings, all that kind of stuff. So I'll, I'll briefly show you the guys the guitar I'm going to play right before I play it. Um, but all the guitars are just going to be going through a Quilter Tone Block 200. I've had this thing forever and I love it. Um, it's particularly good for these demos, especially when I'm in a small room like this, because you can get the general sound of the guitar without having your amp too, too loud. Uh, I'll have the gain quite flat for most of it. it. It just has a bass EQ, but this is flat and I just go a couple notches to... Um, to my left so it's basically flat just a slight slight mid scoop but that's another reason I like doing demos on these quilters is that it's gonna get closer to the tone of the guitar whereas if I did it through like a Fender amp which which will sound great too but it's gonna be this gonna scoop more the mids and it might be a little bit harder to tell what the actual guitar and pickup it's supposed to sound like um, so without further ado let's dive right on in all right, so here for the first guitar, it's a Godin Kingpin 1. Uh, I don't even know if I'm saying the name right. Canadian, Godin, Godin, I don't know. But anyways, actually, I just got this about a week ago, and uh, I, I really, really like it. But I'm going to start with this because um, it's the only guitar I currently have that's a full hollow body in that bigger size. I believe it's a little smaller than like an ES-175 or L5, but it's pretty close in thickness. Um, it just has one pickup in the neck. This one's obviously a little different, it's a P90. So a lot of full hollow bodies will have a humbucker in the neck. But full hollow body is kind of a good choice to start with because if you're um, into like West Montgomery, which to me is like the ultimate straight ahead guitar tone. I mean, you know, he plays an L5, which is somewhat similar to this. Full hollow body and uh, his is a humbucker in the neck, but this, this one's gonna have a P90. So I'll kind of show you some of the sounds here. Now one thing you'll notice, the P90 obviously does buzz. In this particular room, the buzzing is a little exaggerated for whatever reason. So every amp I plug in here um, has a little more buzz than usual. But definitely something to keep in mind is the P90 will be a little bit noisy. But here we go. Especially with chords. 
It's got a very pretty sound, and again, very, um, it's a little brighter than a humbucker, but it makes it a little bit more clear. Another thing I do like, this is with the tone on 10. So one thing with the P90 and rad wound strings that I like, is even if it's a little bright at the beginning, I have somewhere to go, right? Assuming you have a tone knob, which you probably do, I can start lowering this, and now I'm gonna get a little bit more traditional or darker of a sound. Rings out forever. I've never had a guitar that rings out this 
this well. Um, but obviously it's going to be softer acoustically, and that kind of translates to the amp. Um, Volume-wise, a little bit softer, right? But the biggest difference I noticed with the smaller body is the bass. So there's significantly less bass, which personally I generally like because I don't like a whole lot of bass in my sound. Again, unless it's uh, more like a solo guitar thing or maybe a duo thing where that, that might fill it up a little bit. But in a band situation I found, I typically roll off most of my bass anyway because it, it just muddies up my sound. And there's not really a place for that in the band. The guitar, it wants to sit more in that mid, mid rangey kind of thing. But definitely brighter, less bass. Now again, one nice thing, and these are round wound strings as well. The last guitar had 12s. These are 11s. So I, I like keeping 11s on this because I do more bending and like distorted stuff, which I won't really do here. But again, it, it's gonna um, be a little bit easier with 11s versus 12s. But if I roll back the tone a little bit with this, again, it sounds really nice and I can get a little bit closer to that um, traditional sound. Other than it was at a guitar shop I was working at. 
I was in school at the time and I wanted a 335 style guitar, but I didn't have a ton of money to spend. And I, I really liked it, so I've kept it, I've kept it for a long time. And it's it's nothing, well, I've won next, I added a master volume now, but it says it's just a 335 knockoff. It's supposed to be like it, just obviously a lot cheaper. So here it is, uh, not plugged in. So it's got pretty good volume. It's obviously going to be uh, a little bit less than the fully hollow guitars. One thing I should say before we use is it's flat wound. Okay, those first two guitars we tried were round wound strings, which are a little more present, obviously more treble, a little bit brighter. Uh, flat wound strings are a cool option. Again, a lot, not all of them, but a lot of the uh, West Montgomery, Jim Hall, Grant Green, um, I believe George Benson, a lot of those uh, guitar players you hear are gonna use flat wound strings because it's a darker sound. It's like if you play, or even if you play jazz for a while and like you can't get quite get the tone you want or whenever you get to your high B or E string, it's always a little too trebly or too weak sounding. Flat wounds might be a good choice because they, they don't get very bright. So even, uh, this is with everything up. These are 12, so they're fairly thick, but it's not like a crazy high gauge. So they get really dark. Obviously, like all the West stuff and all the octave stuff, it's going to sound really good with the sound. Right, it's going to have that sound to it. Now, before I move on, I'll also mention. I'm using a Dunlop something, one millimeter, Ultec Sharp Pick. Um, I won't go into it too much because, again, too much for one video. But the pick definitely matters whether you're using your pick or your fingers. And actually what I like to do is when I'm playing solo guitar, I actually usually go finger style because your thumb gets so much of a richer sound. <laughs> tip hitting the string significantly significantly brighter than using any combination of your fingers especially your thumb so what I'll do again if I'm playing solo a lot of the times I like finger style because it gives me more options and I can get a little bit richer of a sound but if I'm playing a little faster even some more bebop lines and that kind of stuff I, I can't really do that with my uh, without a pick so I'll use a pick, but I'll actually use the side. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'll use the side of my pick, and it's a trick. I want to say I saw it in a Scott Henderson video. Don't quote me on that, but I saw it somewhere, and some people do do it. Um, and it, it, I like it a lot because it, it's kind of in between. Like if I play the same line, here's my fingers. Um, sorry, here's a pick normally. Here's the side of the pick. the attack and for me like I use a wide range of picking I'll go from soft to I'll pick pretty loud so if, if, if or hard I should say so if I'm using the tip of my pick sometimes we'll get a little bit it might get a little bit harsh whereas if I use the side I can get more of the dynamics I want um, but with a little bit of the harshness so that's definitely something to experiment not only the size of the pick right usually the thicker the darker the sound but also try try using the side of it. I really like it, and I actually use it. Again, depends on the situation, but um, I'll use it quite a bit now. So, anyways, back to this guitar, the flat one. You'll hear a 335 is obviously semi-hollow. The bigger body, I'm hearing definitely more bass in the smaller hollow body, still less bass in the full hollow body, but it, it's pretty bassy. <laughs> I was thinking John Schofield or that kind of sound. It's kind of nice. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, you're not going to get the same kind of boom, which is kind of nice. And it's really not going to feed back unless you crank a ton and ton of gain. So if you're sitting there trying to gain with a hollow body, it's just feeding back all the time and you're, you're kind of sick of it. A 335 is, is definitely a good choice. Now again, this one is, has flat wounds. Um, and it's a personal choice. I mean, the flat lines, again, if it's if you want a warmer sound, 
if you just keep upping your gauge on around around strength and it's still too bright or it's just getting to the point to where it's so heavy you don't like it uh, you, you definitely might want to try flat rounds i like it for um, single note stuff if you're playing more bebop stuff it's going to sound really good for that again it's going to sound darker it won't react quite as harshly to your picking um, if it was like more bossa nova stuff Sound. 
Um, that also I might increase the reverb a little bit and at times, depending on what I'm playing, add the delay, right? on this one it's gonna be super super clear so like if I just ring out some chords